Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Good afternoon, Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Beautiful, beautiful January afternoon in California. I know much of the country is under siege and snowstorms in California here today. It is a beautiful day in my neighborhood. So welcome everyone. My privilege and pleasure to be here with you on a two for Tuesday. This is the every week, the two Facebook Lives. TC Cole, good to see you this afternoon. Looking forward to being your coach this year sometime, TC. Scott Lucas. Scott, thank you for your contributions on sobriety consciousness. Your contribution is exceptional. Kevin Bernard in Chicago. Kevin, my brother, good to see you. Kevin, I remember meeting you in Chicago, October 2019. Kevin Clinton Paulson, my brother. Kevin, how are you? Erica Anderson, congratulations on the purchase of your car. I've been following your content. I know that that is a absolute game changer for you. So was that Jim? Jim Tikepi, good to see you, Jim. Jim, my Iowa homeboy, good to have you here. Jonathan Mason, oh my God. My millionaire insurance broker, Jonathan, good to see you this afternoon. Mark Saunders, good to see you. Love all of you. Today's today's Facebook Live is dedicated to these three key points, love, service, and value. My objective this afternoon is to bring content to you from love, deliver great service, and great value. So I want to thank all of you for being here, every single one of you, with the exception of a couple. I have coached long-term. Caroline Marie Yusi, good to see you this afternoon. If you've not accessed a free 20-minute coaching call, feel free to go right up there and put down your name and number and I will get back to you. If you're a former client and would like to rehire me, I have a unique marketing proposition for you that is left over from Black Friday if you're a former or existing client. So let's move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I mean, that is the serenity prayer. And with what is going on in the world today, it is a great time to be serene, to really find that that space in your body where you're coming from peace, you're coming from power, you're able to deliver your message. Now, that will be a challenge if you're overwhelmed. That will be a challenge if you're in anxiety, fear, and doubt. If you have money issues and you're holding on to poverty consciousness, lack, or or very low self-esteem. So today's Facebook Live is going to be a deep Facebook Live on what it means to hold on to what are called trauma bonds. Trauma bonds are the trauma we experienced as children and teenagers and could be in our early 20s. And the trauma that we hold on to and that then we attract people and situations to fulfill the same set of feelings. One of my clients recently went through a domestic violence situation and I saw that she said she had the courage to bring it and she brought it to to a social media platform. And I was very encouraged to see that she was bringing that to that situation because I'd encouraged her to let go of this relationship. She had let me know about this relationship and it was definitely trauma-based. And the story that she was holding on to is that she had a great childhood and she had, and whatever, whatever the situation was is that there's unresolved issues that oftentimes that we repress. Repress means that we squeeze them down and we don't want to acknowledge them. We squeeze them down and we forget about them. We squeeze them down and we don't remember them. And those feelings that we hold on to that are either repressed or suppressed, the suppressed ones are we sabotage ourselves with over and over. And then when we rise above these feelings, we move into understanding, awareness, love, joy, bliss, sobriety, recovery, and higher levels of consciousness. And that's how we become our optimum best self. And in that optimum self, then we are able to be in a much more non-attached state where we don't let other people affect us and we don't attract other people who traumatize us, violate us, shame us, use guilt to try and control us because our energy doesn't allow that space as frequently. So we're able to separate our feelings from the events that we hold on to. That is the value and the skill of letting go. Those of you who have coached with me, Kayla, good to see you. Inga, good to see you. Tracy, Pam Sloan, good to see you. So good to see all of you. Those of you who have coached with me, followed me, studied my content, I'm very grateful. 
and honored to be able to share some of this content with you because it is, is deeply one of my skill sets is to assist people to understand what a trauma bond is and then the separation from the feelings and the events so that in your day-to-day -day life, you're practicing letting go so that you're not you don't feel rejected in a sales conversation. You don't feel pissed off or abandoned when a teammate leaves. They don't leave you. And when a man or woman you're dating says, I'm done, you don't, you don't take it personal. Or when you find out someone that you're close to is having an affair, you don't personalize it, they're having an affair on me. In a non-attached state, you're able to operate fully in life without being attached to outcomes. That is a skill. It allows you to separate your feelings to the events that shape them. This is what elevates consciousness. This is what allows you to be of more service and more value. This allows you to be your best self. And this, this will also allow you to not relapse as frequently because you're coming from a higher vibration, a higher energy. And just like that woman who, who had the courage to address the situation that elevated her consciousness. And in my coaching with her, I'll be definitely assisting her to understand there's a cause and effect of why we do what we do. So if you grew up in a household where there is violence, you grew up in a household where there's alcoholism, you grew up in a household that there's a strict code of laws that you have to live by. If you have to, if you have to clean your plate, I mean, this can create a trauma bond. It can create a food allergy. When you're forcing yourself to eat your peas, you can end up being allergic to that or other vegetables. It can create gut issues, H. pylori, small intestinal bacterial organisms. It can create irritable bowel syndrome and a whole other series of mind-body connections because the trauma you experience at that dinner table. If you had to become a grown-up before your time, if you had to take care of your mother, your father, if you became a mentor to your mother or your father, if you became the chauffeur, if you had to go down the street and buy alcohol, cigarettes, if you had to put cold towels and compresses on your parents and take care of them, or you became the surrogate parent to the children in your family, you lost your innocence. This can be a trauma bond that you hold on to your entire life. And then you're going to attract people and situations where you enable, over-obligate, do more for others than you do for yourself, and you give your power away. Now, in, as you begin to have a better understanding and awareness of this, this absolutely can change your entire life by the way you perceive the situation. And that perception of how you see the situation can allow you to let go. Robert Kempen, Jason, good to see you. Joe Casper, as always. So the more you understand, Robert, and who else, Roger, good to see you this evening. Now, many of you are in recovery or you've stepped up to the, to the door of recovery and you're looking at being emotionally sober and you're starting to let go and you have a better understanding of why you do what you do and you're starting to let go of your anxiety, fear, and doubt. This, this is game changing. This will unequivocally change your life. And this content that I'm sharing with you is the content that you receive from me and then you go out and, do, you go out and find other places to access this content. Here's one of the best books that I could recommend for you today. It's called Healing and Recovery by David Hawkins. I was reading this book this morning on my spin bike at 4.20 this morning, and I was reading the chapter on anxiety, fear, and doubt. Because anxiety, fear, and doubt are the feelings that we create that drive our addictions. And so that creates a, in, in, a, in an anxiety, fear, and doubt state, what happens, there's the cardio cocktail that the body creates. And it's a concoction of adrenaline and cortisol that we become addicted to. And it's that edgy edge, it's that high that we want to take off with food, drugs, alcohol, sex, avoiding, procrastination, disappointment, frustration, and other feelings that lead to low self-esteem and avoidance tendencies that keep us holding on to a set of feelings that fulfills the outcome that we create, and that is called the payoff. Now, the payoff that we create is what we keep doing over and over, and then we stay in the state of wonderment, going, this doesn't make sense. I don't understand why I do this. I should be further along. Well, that's the egoic mind talking. It's chatter. It's endless chatter that keeps you avoiding a set of circumstances. I will tell you this right now. You do not require hitting rock bottom. I coached a woman who was there already, and she was just saying, I just can't. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to operate. Well, we, we do. We, but if you keep a 
avoiding the inevitable. I mean, if you keep doing what you're doing, there's a possibility you will hit rock bottom. You're going to run out of credit. You're going to run out of time. You're going to run out of solutions. And then you'll be faced with it, with the rock bottom. And the more that you understand this, then you'll just say, I'm so fucking done with this. I mean, that's the breakthrough point. I coached a woman in 2012. The first year of coaching with her, she was difficult. And she wasn't difficult with me. She was difficult being difficult. She had body issues. She had low self-esteem. She had been through anorexia and bulimia. She ran the table on it. She wasn't good enough. Super talented. I mean, super talented woman. She had the whole package. She just didn't know it. I coached her for four years. And while in that four-year period, I watched her start to break through. Most importantly, she let go of her unresolved anger. She vented toward one of her parents. I was able to assist her with, with practicing acceptance and forgiveness and then making amends with herself, not with her with her parent, but she started to make amends with herself about the situation. She eventually began to change who and what she attracted in her second year in a business, and in a leveraged business, she became a seven-figure income earner. Not specifically because of my coaching. It, I mean, I gave her the insight and the wisdom, but because of the application, I showed her how to put into application on the mechanism of letting go. And in that time frame, I had several people between 2011 and 2015 that I was coaching simultaneously. I saw some of them create that breakthrough. Now, what they were breaking through of is what I call a trauma bond. A trauma bond is the emotional trauma that we hold on to, that the body holds on to cellularly. And so in that trauma bond, then we operate in a unconscious situation where we react to situations. I'm experiencing this right now with a series of contractors I've hired on a $400,000 rehab of a project. I'm watching how much they pathologically lie, how they overcommit, how their craftsmanship is eroded, how they put so much, so much pressure on themselves, and they set them up to be disappointed, criticized in other situations, while they they're, most of them have drinking challenges, they eat bad food, and a whole series of other situations that lead to what they hold on to. And there's just such a lack of craftsmanship in, in that trade now because so many people stop being contractors, electricians, and drywallers, and painters. So the pressure is on them. That's what, that's what they're under. And they, they're having challenges finding employees. That's part of the story and part of the reality they face in that profession. And people want their services and they're in demand. I mean, so this is, this is a situation that I myself have to not create a situation worse than it is. Breathe, release, and let go. Focus on the outcome I seek to create. And if this person can't fulfill what I require, then either myself, my assistant, my wife will get it done. And when you learn to focus on the outcome rather than focus on the problem, now you're living the solution. Most of society lives in the problem. That's a direct reflection of holding on to the feelings that are justified, explained, and validated by these situations. Now, the more you understand that you do this, that's acceptance. And that's, that's the value of really understanding letting go. So in acceptance, you own the situation. The situation doesn't own you. You let go of your control and you, you understand that control is an illusion. You have a better understanding that there is no pressure. You're not up in the ceiling looking, going, I'm under pressure. Valerie, Cassie, good to see you this afternoon. Beth, good to see you. It's an honor to be here. Most all of you have had the privilege of coaching you. Debbie Fair, good to see you. So many of you have been following me for years and I, I'm watching you facilitate these changes in yourself. And the value of this is you begin to change who and what. You begin to change who and what shows up in your field of influence. You begin to change up feel and felt. You feel differently about yourself. You feel differently about the universe. You feel differently about your opportunities. And in that set of feelings, now you're emoting a different set of energy. This is what changes who and what you attract. Roger Maldonado is on today's Facebook Live. Roger is an exceptional client and friend of mine that I had the privilege of coaching over about a year and a half period, and, and Roger was telling me one day, oh my God, Jeff, they're asking me to train. They're asking me to be a trainer for my sales company. Well, this because he, he, was, he started to let go in places that he'd never let go of. Now, he'd been through a lot in his life, and I mean, he understands the term rock bottom, and he, he absolutely stepped into that power. I see John Ramsey's on today's call this afternoon. Good to see you, John. Joe Casper's on today's call. Joe is another 
rock star client that I had the privilege of coaching. I started coaching John, Joe in 2002, and I, I was part of the book that he wrote in 2009 and 10, Fire Your Diet. Joe's, Joe's now is a vitamin formulator. He's, he's a wellness formulator of products. He's living his dreams in New Mexico, originally from Staten Island, New York. I mean, I've known Joe for 20 years. I've watched him reinvent himself. And in his 50s, Joe still plays a very high level of baseball. I mean, he's, he, I mean, he has the reflexes. So once you start to understand, now here's, here's what's very important in understanding this. I'll say it a couple times if you, if you don't grasp it yet. So a body that holds on to trauma and a body that holds on to pain will react to stimulus. So that it means like this, it's an autonomic reaction. And you don't even know you're doing it at times. And so it means the body checks out, the body goes into fight or flight, the brain shuts down, sounds that come out of your mouth are um and well, and guess, kinda, and I don't know are prevalent in the sentence structure of someone that's holding on to trauma. Because in a trauma bond, what you're holding on to is doubt. You're doubting that you're good enough. You're doubting uncertainty. You're doubting that you can break through. You're doubting you can pull it off. So you're living in a very low level of energy and your body is going to crave outside influence to take the edge off. So pharmaceutical medication, the alcohol, food, sex, drugs, a multitude of situations, anorexia, bulimia, debting, uh, gambling, and, and a whole multitude of situations to take that grindy grind, that edge off, so you can go, ah. So the body becomes addicted, which creates what is called a tolerance. So if you're 45 or 55 or 65, that means you have a high tolerance emotionally to holding on to a set of feelings, anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, overwhelmed feelings, grief, apathy, and pride, are the main emotions that the body holds on to. Those are the emotions. And the lowest level of emotional transmutation are grief and apathy. Now we're taught to grieve and we wear black at funerals and a black veil and black gloves and black cars and black suits and we're dressed in black and it's there's a pall over the air and we're grieving all these things. We're not taught to celebrate. We're taught to grieve. And so anytime you're in grief, you're just absolutely bottoming out. You're tanking out. In these situations, then you're around a lot of other people that are in grief. I mean, so you, you want to have a better understanding and, and learn to celebrate people's lives rather than grieving situations. So, grief represents loss. It's the end of the era. It's the death of the ego. It's finality. It's the final curtain. It's the final chapter. I mean, we're so we're so conditioned to some of these situations. When you begin to really wake up and have a spiritual experience, and you step into your power, it's like it's it's like a complete different space that you just stepped into. When you start to let go of the brain fog that you've held on to, the fight or flight that you react to on on command. When you stop trading time for dollars in someone else's dream, a place called a job, and you step into your own power, and you step in, and then you start to pull back the curtains and look behind the veil and see who's really back there. And you understand that the history you've been taught may not be the real history. And when you experience that state of consciousness, you're really awake. And in that state of consciousness, if you can really accept that truth, then you'll let go of the falsehood that you've been conditioned and lied to about. When you have that courage to really be that man and woman, then you truly are your higher self. And so you can stand the gaff in that state. You can look down the face of darkness. You can look at the heart of the darkness and say, new sheriff in town, chief, I no longer buy this story because I live in a place called truth, my truth. And see, when you can accept that you're good enough, then you let go of the falsehood you've held on to about not being good enough. When you can realize that you're here for a purpose and it's your responsibility to find that purpose and to be purpose driven, then you'll let go of going, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with my life. I don't, I don't have a purpose. Well, you don't have a purpose because you're not purposeful. You're wandering around life in an overwhelmed state, holding on to a series of trauma bonds that aren't your fault the situations happen to you, but it's your responsibility to let go. So if you don't teach yourself the skill of letting go, you can't teach others to let go. I was coaching one of my clients today, Robert Kempen, and he, were discuss he and I were discussing this today, is the value of really understanding that mechanism of letting go. Once you understand that, that skill of letting go, you're always letting go. But until you understand acceptance, gratitude, 
forgiveness and the longer breath cycle, changing the communication, the way you communicate between your brain and your body, having a better understanding of persuading yourself to let go rather than forcing yourself to let go. Understanding that surrendering does not mean you give in. Surrendering means you let go of your will to be an addict. Surrendering means you let go of your will to be right. Surrendering means you can walk away from situations and conversations that don't qualify for your time. Surrendering also means in a selling experience that you don't chase, stalk, and beg someone. You easily and effortlessly let them go because you realize the pleasure isn't worth the pain. And in that state of consciousness that you begin to live in, you're separating yourself from the events that create the trauma you hold on to. So letting go of, the, of your active the reaction that you live in in fight or flight, and then moving into a space of responsiveness. So when you learn to respond to the stimulus, you don't personalize it. As you're responding to the stimulus, you're in a new flexibility. As you respond to stimulus, you're able to be responsible. And when you're responsible, you're not worried about success, you're focused on results. I don't focus on success, I focus on the result. Success comes as a byproduct of the effort. And see, if there's no effort, then there's no result. And so what many people equate the no effort, so if I don't put any effort in, then I don't fail, yet I fail by avoiding failing. It's the ultimate contradiction. I had a woman recently say to me, I would hire you, but I'm afraid if I go to my husband and he gives me the money to hire you and then I don't execute, then I'll feel bad. I said, well, that's the very reason you hire me. But once again, this went over that person's head. I easily and effortlessly stepped out of the conversation and moved on. So th that is the content that I have for you today on a trauma bond. A trauma bond are the events we hold on to that are either repressed, that we don't recognize, we don't remember, and we hold on to. And the letting go process of, of letting go of a trauma is accepting what happened either to you or with you being able to be very clear on the cause that creates the effect, acceptance of that situation without feeling shame, moving into a state of forgiveness, and then making amends in the role you played in the situation, if any, and making amends yourself while learning how to be and stay productive and letting go of your stories. So, much, so many of the stories that we hold on to are trauma bond related. This is why people have challenges, prospecting, connecting, reaching out to people, because we equate that with rejection. So the, the body that runs the brain says, oh my God, that's a lion, that's a tiger. The reptilian brain sees it as a threat, as a possibility of being hurt and damaged and all these situations that we tend to hold on to. As you begin to separate your feelings from the event that shape them, and you are no dating, that's right, Cassie, that's good. Valerie, as an addict, I have a built-in for forgetter in the past. That's very good. Thank you. That's great content. As you begin to separate your feelings from the events that shape them, you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feeling. If you are on today's Facebook Live and you are an existing client or a former client and you'd like to find out more about my unique marketing proposition for coaching, feel free to give me a message and I will respond to you within 24 hours. If you're a if you're a new client or watching my content, have not experienced a free 20-minute coaching session or coached with me, feel free to reach out to me and I'll let you know what my unique marketing proposition for 2022 is. Thank you very much, everyone. I will be back here tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific. I'm looking forward to connecting with you on 2 for Tuesday. Tony, good to see you this afternoon. Tony Kazmiski. Have a great afternoon, everyone.